for you today is uh, another National Geographic kids book. This time we're going to read about bats. Who's ever seen a bat before? Have you seen a bat before? Do you have a personal connection to a bat? I think I told you my bat story before about how the bat got in the cabin and was swooping around and pulled the covers up over my head. I was afraid it was going to get in my hair or something. So we turned all the lights off and Mr. Wright, he opened the door and it finally went out. That's my bat story. Maybe you can write your bat story and send it to me. I would like to read it. Or you could just tell it to me. I would like to know your bat story. Um, table of contents. Look at all those. We're going to start with what's a bat? Is it a bird? I don't know. What's a bat? It says, I sleep by day. I fly by night. I have no feathers to aid my flight. What am I? The answer is a bat. A bat is a mammal. Mammals are animals that nurse their young, have hair, and are warm-blooded. Human do humans, dogs, and whales are all mammals, but bats have a special ability. They can fly. Now, what does it mean to be warm-blooded? A warm-blooded animal that drinks its mother's milk has a backbone and has hair. That's what a mammal is, but warm-blooded means we can warm up our own blood. We don't have to lay in the sun to get warm. That's a cold-blooded animal. We're warm-blooded animals. We're mammals, too, because we drink our mother's milk. Babies do when they're born, don't they? Yeah. And we have fur, and, and bats have fur, too. I'm going to let you look at the picture right here. That right there? You know what? We read this book before a long time ago. Remember when we read Stella Luna? We read this, too. But we're going to read it again anyway. Bat food. There are about 1,200 1, types of bats in the world. Most of them eat insects. Insect eating, insect eating bats are usually small in size. There are more than 150 types of fruit bats. These bats are usually larger and search for sweet fruits and other plants. How would you like to meet a bat? A few bats hunt for larger prey, such as frogs, birds, or mice. Oh, look at that one. And there's a picture right there, too. <laughs> look at you. Look how ugly is that? Look at its nose. It has like a pig nose and pig ears. I can't remember that one drawing of that. Some people think, let me scoot over here a little bit. Okay, there we go, maybe that's better. Some people think all bats suck your blood. This is not true. Only three kinds of bats drink blood. Ooh, there are bats that drink blood? This group is known as vampire bats. Oh, they mostly feed on the blood of animals like cows and deer, not humans. Ooh. I didn't even know that. Well, I guess I knew that, but I forgot it. Now, wait a minute. I'm looking closer at this bat, and it looks like it looks like it has a frog sticking out of its mouth. Can you see that? See those legs hanging down there? Right there. Those are the feet of a frog, I think. I look close. I thought maybe it was an insect, but I'm pretty sure it's a frog. Night flight. You look at the picture first, and then I'll read you the words. It says night flight. Did you know that while you're fast asleep, bats are busy filling their bellies? Bats are nocturnal, meaning they're active at night. This way of life has many advantages for a bat. Insect eating bats often feast on bugs that come out after dark. Pollen and nectar eating bats might feed on plants that only open at night. Nectar is a sweet liquid made by flowers. It says bat words down here, nocturnal, the state of being active at night. Are you nocturnal? Not me. Nectar, a sweet liquid made by flowers. Mm. Bat bodies. You want to zoom in and look at that? They labeled all the different parts of the bat there for us. Looks like we they have a coat of fur and four fingers. Four fingers, we better remember that when we draw it. And it has a 
thumb. Oh, four fingers and a thumb, that's like us. I'm trying to read these words backwards. Has a sensitive nose, mm. sharp eyesight, a wing, and big ears. I bet there's a reason why it has big ears. I bet we're gonna find out. Bat bodies. Scientists call bats chiroptera, a Greek name that means hand wing. That's because bats have four fingers and a thumb just like us. A thin layer of skin connects the fingers. This forms a wing. Bats also have a sensitive nose and big ears. Their big ears help some bats see with sound. See with sound? Can you see with sound? I bet we're going to find out what that means. It says echolocation, a system in some animals for locating objects using sound waves. Okay, so you see that bat there? You see those circles? Those circles are supposed to be sound waves. We can't see sound waves, but we can hear them. They drew that so you could kind of see what they would look like if you could see them. In a pitch black night, bats can scoop up a tiny in insect with ease. No flashlight required. How do they do it? They make a sound that travels until it hits an object. Then it bounces off the ab object and travels back to the bat. From this echo, the bat can tell an object's size and how far away it is. This is called echolocation. Say that, echolocation. I wonder how many syllables that is. Let's put it right here. Echolocation. Can you count how many times my chin hits my hand? Echolocation. I think it was five. That's five syllables. Wow. Big word. Funny face. Yes, they do have funny faces, don't they? Look at that. Oh, is there thing in there? Ooh. This is a false vampire bat right here. Some bats have strange looking faces. Special ears, noses, and mouths help bats tune into and make sounds while they use echolocation. Amazonian bat, spotted bat, and a big-eared bat. Their faces may look odd to us, but for bats, their features work perfectly. Hanging out. They're all grouped together like those ants we read about yesterday. When bats are not hunting for food, they're usually hiding in a roost. Roosts can be caves, treetops, or attics. Bats pick places that are well hidden and protect them from bad weather. When most bats rest in their roost, they hang upside down. It says little red-headed flying foxes roosting in a tree. Oh, flying foxes. That must be a kind of a bat. Wanna look at that picture again? Oh, hang on a second. Let me put that away back. It says my battery's getting low. Oh no, I better hurry finish this, huh? Have you ever hung upside down in a jungle gym? I've seen you do it before. You might start to feel dizzy. Bats have special veins to keep their blood flowing properly so they never feel dizzy. You know how like the blood all goes to your head? That doesn't happen to bats. Bats can't take off from the ground like birds do. They have to fall into flight. Hanging up that side down is the best way to make a quick getaway. And here is a whole bunch of bats hanging upside down from a cave. I guess they just let go and whoo, off they go. What? That would be fun. Baby bats. Oh, it's so cute. Look at that baby bat. Can you see it? The mama and the baby. So cute. Baby bats called pups completely depend on their mothers after they're born. That's like human babies too, isn't it? They're blind, hairless, and can't fly. They cling to their mother's fur. The pups nurse their mother's milk until their wings are strong enough to fly. Remember when we read that book, Stella Luna, a long time ago? Remember she got separated from her mom? But it had a happy ending, didn't it? Bat rescue. Aww. This is a super cute picture. Look at that. Do you remember when we saw that before? I remember that one now. They look like little puppies, don't they? No, why do they call pups? During storms in an Australian rainforest, wind can knock baby bats to the forest floor. The babies usually don't survive unless wildlife workers come to the rescue. The lucky bats are taken to a bat hospital. The babies are bundled in blankets and fed milk from a bottle. 
After a few months, they are strong enough to return to the wild. Nature's helpers. I think bats could help nature. Remember how, in, how the ants helped nature? By helping the soil. It says, a world without bats wouldn't be very nice. Bats are an important part of the ecosystem. Insect-eating bats gobble up millions of bugs. Many of these insects are pests that could harm humans or destroy crops. Bats keep their numbers under control. Yeah, so if you're a farmer, um, then you like bats are your friend because they eat all those bugs that eat your plants and your crops and things. Other bats keep forests healthy by spreading seeds and pollen. This allows trees and flowers to multiply. What is an ecosystem? It tells us down here at the bottom of this book, because I used that big word, didn't I, ecosystem. Remember I said, bats are an important part of the ecosystem. An ecosystem is the environment in which things live. So we're all sharing an ecosystem here. The trees, the people, the bats, the ants. Ooh, bat myths busted. Myths are things that people sometimes believe, but they're not really true. So some people have misunderstandings about bats. Here are a few common myths that drive experts batty, drive them crazy. Here's a myth, bats are blind. Truth, nope. Bats have excellent eyesight. Some bats hunt using sight alone. I did not remember that from the last time I read this book. That might be a fun fact for me to remember when I'm thinking of five. Uh, myth, bats are dirty. Hmm? Truth, bats are actually meat freaks. They groom themselves frequently. Mothers lick their babies to keep them clean. Kind of reminds me of a cat because cats are always cleaning themselves too. Myth, bats get stuck in hair. Ah, uh, <laughs> I thought that bat was going to get stuck in my hair. That was a myth I believed, wasn't it? It says, truth, with sharp senses and echolocation, bats are very good flyers. They can avoid obstacles the width of a thread. The width of a thread. Wow. I don't think I could do that. <gasps> Myth. Vampire bats turn into human vampires. Mm. There is no such thing as a human vampire. Sorry. And bats certainly don't turn into them. But it's fun to imagine it, right? Bat Hall of Fame. This is a teeny tiny. The smallest bat in the world is the bumblebee bat. Its wingspan is five inches across, about like that. Its body is the size of a jelly bean. Oh, that's tiny, isn't it? That's a good guy right there, right up there. And then, and then they're also telling us about a mega bat. The largest bat is the three pound flying fox. Its wingspan can be six feet long. That's longer than you are tall. Oh, here's another one of those question and answer things. Why did the bat use insect repellent? Because it was on a diet. Insect repellent. Insect repellent makes the insects go away. It repels them. So, oh, I get it. He was on a diet. He didn't want to eat those insects. He was getting too fat, I guess. Okay. Happy camper. The Hondurian white bat makes tents out of leaves to protect itself from constant rain showers. Well, that's smart. And then a most crowded home. 20 million Mexican free-tailed bats live in one Texas cave. 20 million? These bats are also the fanciest flyers. They can soar as high as 10,000 feet and zoom through the air at speeds over 40 miles per hour. They have a picture here, but I can't even really tell what it is. Hmm. Biggest appetite. Little brown bats can eat up to 1,200 mosquitoes in one night. Yum, it says. Wow, I'm really glad because I don't like mosquitoes. I'm glad the bats get 1,200. That's a lot. Hmm. All right, now we know more about bats, or we remember more about bats. Can you remember two or three things and tell somebody what you learned about bats? Good. See you later.